day two. So we are headed to the Burj Khalifa today, which is the tallest building in the world. I hope we're all okay going up it. We'll see when we get there. <laughs> There's also a ginormous mall. I think it's one of the biggest malls in the world as well, right next door to it. And a fountain show, but that's not until 6pm and we're setting off at around midday. So we'll see if we're still there to catch the fountains. If not, we're just going to have a goosey around the mall and go up the Burj. So come with us. I've shown you the outfit I'm wearing today. I'm fully covered today because I'm going out. So I've covered my arms, my shoulders and my legs. If I was in the hotel, I wouldn't need to do that. You could, you can wear your shorts, your t-shirts, anything, you know, your bikini, whatever you want. But because we're going outside of the hotel, I've covered up today. So yesterday, at the end, it got a bit windy, it got really, really windy. So today was forecast for another windy day. Hopes that burge doesn't topple over, <laughs> start bending in the wind. It's another windy day today, so we thought we'd do this today and then maybe go to the pool tomorrow when it's um, not quite as windy. This is the beautiful outdoor seating area for Saffron, the buffet restaurant. So this is where we had our breakfast in the morning. It was nice and shaded, but lovely and warm. Really nice atmosphere. Um, it wasn't too busy outside, so that was good. This morning I had some fruit and fibre, some dried blueberries. I'd never had dried blueberries before. I was really into these. They only had them this one morning and some yogurt and some fruits and lots of water. On the way back from breakfast, we bumped into this guy. Look, he's loving life. Oh, jazz hands all the way. We got a taxi from directly outside our hotel. They were sat outside waiting. They were very reasonable. This is the Dubai Mall. So largest mall, I think, in the world. Absolutely massive it was. There was no way you could do all that in a day. And here is the bottom of the Burj, Burj Khalifa. And that is the top. Oh, it's pretty high. <laughs> Seeing it on the camera actually doesn't really do it justice. When you're there, it, it looks much more magnificent. The size of this place was unbelievable. There were three floors. I was like a moth to a flame with some of these dress shops. They were stunning. The shops themselves looked like something you would see on TV, like in Pretty Woman. And the dresses and the fashion are so beautiful. Just unfortunately about three foot too long for me, these dresses. But you know, you can dream. So we were heading over towards the entrance to where you would get the elevator to take you up the Burj Khalifa. We actually bought our tickets before we arrived um, in Dubai. We got them from attra attractiontickets.com. Now these were a really good price. We got to pick five attractions from around the Dubai and Abu Dhabi area. You didn't have to pre-book your attractions before you arrived, you could just get the five attractions and then all you do is you go up to the desk and trade those in for a ticket um, for that attraction when you get there. We didn't have any problems with doing this and I would recommend it. As we walked along this corridor, it gave you a year-by-year -year update on how the Burj was constructed. So it began in 2004 here 
and then each year it shows you what stage they were up to. So the superstructure started in 2005 and then 2006 they were up to level 50. Hard workers. So then we headed over towards the lift to take us to the viewing platform. I let you down here guys. I thought I was filming in the lift. The lift was actually one of the best bits. It showed you like all oh, the top of the Eiffel Tower, the top of all these different buildings. As you were going up, it was like, oh, you're past that now, you're past that now. I am so sorry it wasn't filming. I thought it was and it wasn't. So fortunately, I only caught the back end of the elevator trip. And also, just quickly to mention, Paul is frightened of heights, so he is doing this for our boys. Good on him, he's a good lad. Oh gosh, that is scary. Wow, amazing. They're on the outside though. <laughs> This screen telescope here was amazing. You could see what the view would be like through the telescope at night. Um, back when it was not developed, it had all the surrounding area you could look at of how it was at night time, at the daytime, different views. It also showed local landmarks as well. You could have spent quite a long time just looking through this telescope. And they had quite a few of them dotted around the whole outside. You could go all the way around, 360, there were windows all the way around to look. And I've never seen anything like this before. St. Sebastian's looking here at some of the landmarks. Oh, well, that's a box park. Ooh. So in with your attraction price, you got the elevator up to the viewing platform here. There was another viewing platform one floor below, which was outside. There was also the telescopes, there was a gift shop, and there was this quirky thing, which looked like you were looking down. And if you stamped on it, it broke. It made a cracking sound like it was breaking. They had a gift shop here at the top and they also had a gift shop again when you came out of the elevator at the bottom. They also were selling the photos that they took of us when we first walked in. I did purchase one so I will insert it. Beautifully leather bound with a little metal plaque on the front and then you got a picture of the Burj and then a picture of us falling from the top of the building. However, I did have my phone on my knee. 
magic. Let's not ruin the magic. And the Burj Khalifa, Laurie. Good. Yeah. You enjoyed it. What did you enjoy about it? Uh, mostly just looking outside. <laughs> yeah. Quite nice. Yeah, it's good to see the views, isn't it? Yeah. Everybody dreams. Many of us dream at night. People who daydream though, they remember their dreams and they plan to do something about it. We want the world to recognize that our hometown, this little city, is arriving on the global scene. One of the things that we're very passionate about is how we built this building in respect of the human spirit. Respecting the city we live in, respecting our people, and respecting quality as well in what we do. It's not about tall buildings, it's about pride. This building is a very emotional one for all of us in the Middle East. We need a successful story for this region. And I'm glad that we've participated in creating a positive story about growth, about success, about progress. You've been up all this way? This top staggers, 828 metres. Just came on then, how do you tame the wind? Because obviously it's, it's a very tall building. How clever. Here we are back down again so there were some interactive things for the children and for anybody to do at the bottom there were lots of information things that you could interact with and then we exited through the gift shop i have to say paul was glad to be back down he was getting yeah i felt his heart his heart was hammering up there glad to be back down and he did that as well like i say because laurie really wanted to go up so well done to him they have a monopoly for everything don't they nowadays there was a dubai monopoly which is quite cool i thought that'd be quite a good uh, souvenir or gift if you were looking you know lots of usual trinkets and things like that to remember your trip they had stuffed toys they had the board games as you can see lots of photo frames and some lady scarves as we were leaving Chicken, barbecue, they're all a bit different, aren't they? Mm -hmm. we made our way over to the food court at this mall and it was big. I think there were quite a few food courts in this area. Sebastian just needed a snack and we wanted a drink. So we were having a quick look there on the McDonald's menu just because we are sad acts and I wanted to see what was available in different countries. It blows my mind that there's like beer in some European countries and some unusual desserts. Anyway, after I'd had a look, we headed over to KFC. Sebastian had some chicken because he hadn't had much breakfast and we all got a drink and we sat outside. The temperature was glorious and the views were just lovely. We're a little bit cautious about where we would be able to eat with it being Ramadan and fasting going on in Dubai. However, in the food courts you were absolutely fine, everything just ran as normal. When we did get snacks and drinks, we just stayed sat down in that area and we didn't walk around with them. So this is where the fountain show takes place tonight. 
we are sat outside. Look, I mean, you can watch it from. There's lots and lots of restaurants here. And we're just sat outside the mall. It's like enclosed with plants. They did do desserts really well in Dubai. I noticed that there was a lot of sweet options available, cakes and uh, shakes, all sorts of things. You could get anything your heart desired really. And lots of patisseries. With it being Ramadan as well, I think a lot of these things were uh, given as gifts. So they had a lot of things for display and obviously they've got the moon there as well. A lot of the stars and moon decorations were in the malls. I enjoyed visiting Dubai at this time and I probably would do again. I think the crowd levels were smaller at some of the places we went to and just the festivities, the feel of it, it, it was lovely. We were a little bit worried to begin with that it would be quite restrictive. However, we did not find that. Asin always likes to visit the Lego shop and in this one they have a replica of the Burj. After we'd done trashing all the shops, <laughs> we headed over to the ice rink just to have a look. I've never seen an ice rink in a mall before. And this chap who's just skated past us has a Liverpool football club sweater on. And my brother and my mum and my dad are all Liverpool supporters, so I had to take a picture of him. So some more beautiful Ramadan decorations here. Paul has his own patisserie here. Of course he does. If you've seen the Flen vlog, you will see that he's a very into boulangerie. As you can see people walking around, I covered my shoulders and my legs, but not everybody was doing it. That would be a problem for you. As long as you stick to the tourist areas, you could wear whatever you wanted. And also eating wise, just having an awareness that people were fasting and sticking to the food courts, that's all. Iced coffee and a donut, don't mind if I do. Some losses time, we've come out of the mall. Uh, Paul's just having to do a little bit of work, so he's gone to sit in the shade. We've just come to have a look round in the sunshine, it's beautiful. Uh, the mall was just lovely because it's so big it was not too busy at all the only shop that we actually bought anything from was the lego shop sebastian used his spending money to get some lego for himself and we also had a donut each paul didn't have a donut laurie's just signaling to me that he got some candy floss and sebastian got a few sour sour patch kids and we got a donut, I got a coffee. Oh yes, this is a life, isn't it? Now we're here in these beautiful surroundings. struggled a little bit finding where we need to get the Uber so I think that's like a this is not it's a Nike mega store so it says the village on some things so we've got the village there you come out of those revolving doors because it's so big and then you turn left down here with the parking 
and then it says Uber pick up only. So we're waiting now for our Uber. It was super tricky to find because it's such a big place. So Ubers were a really good way to get around, however outside a lot of the hotels and when we came out of the theme parks and the malls there were taxis that were on the clock, they were also good value so if that's easier they're a better value than Uber, we found that. Then we arrived back at the hotel, it was just after 3pm so we headed over to the Imperial Lounge. This was included in our club level upgrade to get some snacks. Now when I say they do like an afternoon tea and snacks, there was a lot of choice. As you can see here, they had lots of fresh food and breads, pita breads for dipping, lots of salsa and yoghurt and sour cream, popcorn, nachos there, all different colours, got lots of salads. So this really is a buffet in itself. They had skewer, chicken skewers, and lots of crisps, power balls, and sweets. Yeah, lots of things to choose from. They also had everyday fresh juices. So squeezed like beetroot, vegetable juices, fruit juices and lots of tea and coffee that was all included some cheeses there and some fruits so this was a great thing because we could eat here at between three and five then go for a drink between five and seven because the alcoholic beverage and the mocktails and things were served then so we could stay down and then you could go back to your room and then you could just have your buffet or your evening meal at like 9 10 p.m there was even a musician on in here, um, a lady playing the violin, however I didn't want to get copyright, so you will hear a little bit of that in the upcoming clip, but I had to cut her out here. They added these little millionaire shortbread, I mean it was such a good choice. Got that one, the tropical. Good. Yeah. It's blowing a gale. It is six o'clock, six p.m. It's really, really, really windy. But um, Laurie and Paul are in the pool. Even though it was windy, the boys wanted to dip, so they did that, and then we all went back to the room, got dried off, then got ready to go down for our evening meal. I'm gonna end this vlog here. Oh my goodness me, we got up to a lot. We went up the Burj, we had a look around that giant mall. It's half past eight, me and Sebastian are just about to go down to the buffet. Hope you've enjoyed it and having a look around Dubai. And we've got all our swimwear lined up there. I've actually got my um, jumper, travel day jumper back on because I was chilly. It is chilly tonight, it's the wind. It is to be the most windiest today and then I think the wind is to drop tomorrow. So tomorrow I think we are just going to the beach in the pool and having a bit more of a lazier day and we've still got some water rides that we want to do at the water park. That might be tomorrow, that might be the day after. We're going to see how things go. So join us for day three. I will hopefully see you then. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.